Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Anne's. Together we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. I will not leave you orphans, Jesus promises his disciples in today's gospel, emphasizing the importance of the care that a parent gives. On Mother's Day, we honor our mothers and all those who have been like mothers to us, those who will always care for us in a similar way to how God has always and always will care for us. Our Mass intention is for Vince Fries. Our celebrant is Father Ray, assisted by Deacon Nick. Please check that your cell phones are silenced and take a moment to greet each other as we will begin our liturgy momentarily. Good afternoon. We gather this day so that with the universe we might declare in our lives the glory and majesty of our God in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the great communion promised as a gift of the Holy Spirit rest always with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, Today we will hear St. Luke, the author of the Acts of the Apostles, report that when the people of Samaria heard Philip proclaim Christ and saw him perform wondrous signs, they reacted with great joy. May great joy now come upon us as well as we listen to the word of God proclaimed and then participate in this wondrous miracle of the bread and wine becoming the body and blood of Christ. As we begin then, let us seek God's mercy, pardon, and peace. Lord Jesus, you died for us, the righteous for the unrighteous. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose victorious from the grave 
Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sent us the Spirit to remain with us forever. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God, in great love then, forgive all of our sins. Fill us now with the Spirit of peace and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. pray. Grant to us, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of Easter joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in all we say and do, in imitation of of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. 
I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you, and in a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, and you live, and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my, whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves them, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. find out whether the speakers were going to go squirrely when I got out here instead of just me going squirrely. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that I studied and worked and read and at 1.30 this afternoon I hadn't got a clue. I didn't have a clue what I was going to talk about. And at 1.30, and then, and then of course about 1 o'clock I thought, well, one thing I forgot to do was to ask the Holy Spirit for some help. <laughs> and about 1.30, I found a, 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 a sermon by Bishop Behrens. And if you're familiar with him, he, uh, he, he's pretty well able to lay things out. Uh, so, uh, you know, I usually steal things from other homilies. Uh, I can tell you I may have stolen a little bit more today than usual. But anyway... Here it goes. Um, one of the things, that, well, the thing that I, I didn't realize about these readings was when I had been doing all my studying is they're all about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and, and the Holy Spirit and how we see the Holy Spirit in our lives. Uh, so Bishop Barron had five things that he came up with uh, that would help us recognize the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the first one comes right out of the first reading from the book of Peter. And it speak boldly about your faith. Now, I don't know how many times, I, I can admit that I do the same thing. When people start talking about religion, I kind of back off, I shy away. Uh, there's two things we don't talk about with friends, and that's religion and politics. Uh, in fact, I have a very good friend that lives up in North Carolina, and uh, he came to visit a while back, and he started to talk about religion, and I know that he's extremely conservative, uh, both in religion and politics. And I said, John, we've been a good friend for a long time, haven't we? And he says, yep. I said, it's because we've never discussed religion and politics. <laughs> so we're still friends, uh, and we stopped talking about religion and politics. At any rate, uh, Bishop Barron says, speak boldly about your faith. If you see somebody who is speaking boldly about their faith, faith, there's the Holy Spirit. That's one way of seeing the Holy Spirit. Now, the question I would ask you and I ask myself as I go through each of these, how many of these apply to me? First of all, have I spoken boldly about my faith any place else than right here? And I think you need to answer the same question. I know it's not your job to get up in front and, and preach a homily, but I would ask you, when was the last time you spoke boldly about your faith? And the answer, if the answer is, I don't remember doing that, maybe you need to get with the Holy Spirit a little bit more. That's the message, message to me. Um, his second one was to expel demons. Now we saw that in, in the first reading, the first thing Peter did was he preached, I'm sorry, Peter, um, I lost him now. Philip, the first thing Philip did was expel the demons. He preached about, uh, about God and the demons floated away. And you say, well, yeah, we don't have those demons today. Yeah, we do. 
There's some darknesses in our lives, and those are those demons. There's times when we're not quite sure uh, that the world is as bright as it ought to be, and we could make it brighter by expelling whatever demons that are, there are that are causing that darkness. So when we see darkness, we see not the Holy Spirit, we see, we see the evil spirit. And when you see somebody who is bummed out all the time, there's, they need you. They need you to bring the Holy Spirit to them. That brings up number three. Number three is joy. You know, that's one of the fantastic things about St. Anne's. We are just, it, St. Anne's is just so full of joy in all of the ministries and all the things that we do. We do it because we love God and we love the people there, which kind of ties in some of the other things. But joy is important, and that is a picture of the Holy Spirit. When we see others doing with joy, or when we are joyful, Number four, kind of goes back to number two. Be ready to explain your faith to anyone who would ask. Explaining our faith and living our faith is something that is, we don't do often, but those who explain their faith, those who stand up and say, I am a Christian. That's kind of like the king of England hanging his flag in Balmoral, saying, this is where I am. Well, when we stand up and say, I am a Christian, and I'm ready to explain my faith to anyone who asks, a little bit different from being bold about it, to anyone who asks, then... Uh, the explanation of that faith is our flag that we hold up and say, a Christian lives here. And number five is love. And the way Bishop Barron explained it, which is probably the way we've all heard it, is, is the connection between God the Father and God the Son is love, and that's the Holy Spirit. It's, it's difficult to explain it any other way. Um, but if you're in a situation where there's no love, there's no Holy Spirit. And we all have the opportunity to, to bring love to any situation, any difficult situation. That's what we're called to do as Christians, Christians that are led by the Holy Spirit. So, net it out. Speak boldly. Let people know you're a Christian. Number two, expel darkness. If you see somebody is bummed out, find out what it is and expel the darkness that's in their life. Maybe just helping them with a prayer is something that you can, can help them with. Number three, bring joy. Make sure that your face reject, reflects the joy that you should be bringing. That's, that's the joy they're going to see, is what's on our faces. And the fourth, the fifth thing is, is love each other. Just as God the Father and God the Son love each other through the Holy Spirit. Amen?
is in for our hope as we together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 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 the Holy Sp
that he is in you and you in him. Help us to see your son in others more clearly and to see you in him as we see our needs fulfilled through the one who remains with you always, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, now and forever. Amen. This weekend's second collection is for Catholic Communications.
sisters and brothers, in that spirit of Christ, let us offer back now our lives and these our gifts and pray that all will be acceptable to our almighty and loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with these sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Grant this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you our thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ Jesus our Savior. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh to be our mediator, and he has spoken your words to us, called us to follow him, he is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather women and men whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human family, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered together by his love, and when, as once for the disciples on the road to Emmaus, so now for us, he opens up the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit, sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving you thanks, handed it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, drink from it. It is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Therefore, 
before Holy Father as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have now seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer to you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. So look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we now show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been entrusted to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your spirit, Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John, our Archbishop, with all other bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote ourselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joys and their hopes, we may faithfully bring to them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give to them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. For there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Our Lady of La Salette, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Anne, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray that we might remain always open to the spirit which Christ seeks to bring into our life. Our Father, who art in Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await now the blessed hope 
the second coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace is my gift to you. Look now not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant the peace, unity, and hope of your kingdom. Will you live, reign, and love us forever and ever. Amen. And so may the risen and the living Lord's peace be always with you. And let us share with one another a sign of peace. Behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
like to um, <coughs> excuse me, ask uh, all our mothers to stand who are here, uh, mothers, grandmothers, expectant mothers, um, as we, uh, <coughs> excuse me, pray a blessing on you tonight. And also like you to um, pray especially for all of our mothers who are not here, perhaps in other parts of the country, perhaps at home, they may be ill or in hospitals. Um, pray too for all of our moms who have passed into the kingdom where they share in the eternal love of the Lord. And let us especially too pray for mothers who have lost children and for their courage and their peacefulness of heart. O oh, loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless all these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and their love shine forth and grant that we, their daughters and sons, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. We ask this blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessings. If I could ask our extraordinary ministers to the sick to come forward for their own blessing and dismissal. Sister and brother, we give you today Christ's body to take to those of our sisters and brothers who are weak, ill, infirm. May the Lord strengthen them in spirit and remind them of their unity with us in this family of faith. And let them renew their faith and joy in his resurrection. Go then in peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just a couple of announcements. I uh, invite you to join us this Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock here in the church to pray the La Salette Living Rosary together with a group of people who are coming together to share in that special prayer time for all the needs of our community, especially for the needs of vocations also, which we have uh, continuously praying, we are continuously praying for uh, from the Lord. I'd also um, like to let you know, and I know it's a little inconvenience this week, and I ask your, your patience with it. We have to um, re-seal uh, the front part of the entrance of the office building in the new building downstairs. So uh, that's going to be closed off for the next three days. You can still get into the office if you come in through the side entrance where the little side parking lot is, or come up through here, take the elevator or stairs down, you can still get into the parish office. But I ask your uh, patience on that. We have to get that redone uh, as we finish off our building project. So thank you in advance for that patience. Uh, are there any guests, are there any visitors here today that we can welcome? If you were, if you stand up and let us know where you're from. South Florida. South Florida, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Glad you're with us. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. You say Los Angeles? My old stomping grounds. Welcome. Buddy over here. Up in the balcony. Don't see anybody. Okay. Great. Well, enjoy your visits with family and friends. And know that you're always welcome here whenever you're away from home. Please make this your family of faith. Let us uh, pray together in thanksgiving. <laughs> oh.
almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, so that we may live more faithfully the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one loving God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us bow down our heads for the Lord's blessing. And to each of these invocations, I ask you to respond with amen. <clears throat> May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you to remain with you forever. Amen. The Knights of Columbus are passing out roses to all of the women of the parish. Uh, it is a Mother's Day celebration, but it's for all women. So please stop by and pick up the roses. The Mass is ending. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks.